While any database begins with defining your tables, a vital next step is the ability to add relationships from one table to another. Because much of your data is naturally connected, you're not trying to invent arbitrary relationships that don't exist, you're trying to describe what's already there. So you might first define a customer table by itself, or an order table or a product table. But orders are placed by customers, and they are orders for specific products. Yes, information about an order is different from information about a customer, but they are related. So we need to formally describe the relationship between our tables. And the way we describe relationships is based on keys. Let's go through an example. I have a simple customer table here. And it has this column at the start, customer ID, which is set up to automatically generate a unique number for each customer row as it's added to the database. So that's our primary key here. And one of the benefits of having that key is we can also use it elsewhere. So I have another simple table, order. And each row here represents one order. So it has its own primary key, order ID, which also is generating an automatic number. Now I'm going to imagine we have such a straightforward business that we only sell one product. So I just need to know a quantity and a total amount due. But each order is an order for a particular customer. And to process an order, you would need to know who this applies to. So how do we get that data? Well, we could add columns to the order table and start copying across all the relevant data from the customer table into the order table whenever an order is placed. But A, that would be duplication of data, something to avoid in general. And B, there's just no need to do this. Instead, what we do is we add a customer ID column to our order table. We're taking the key to one row in the customer table and using it again in the order table to describe the connection between the two. And we're not doing this casually. We actually tell the database management system that this is a formal relationship between these tables. So every order row now has a customer ID, but Whereas the customer table has a customer ID that has to be unique, in order table, it doesn't have to be unique. We could have the same customer ID occur twice or three times or a dozen times. In this case, 367 is occurring twice, multiple orders by the same customer. Because here, this number is not uniquely identifying a row in the order table, we have order ID for that. So in the customer table, customer ID is our primary key. But when it's being used in the order table, it is not a primary key, though it is still a key. It's referred to as a foreign key and is not unique. Now, the benefit of having this relationship defined in the database is we can go either way. We could start at the customer row and then take that customer ID and go get every order for that customer. Or we can go from the order row find a customer ID and find out which customer is associated with that particular order. And when you have a relationship like this, it's what's defined as a one-to-many relationship. One customer can have many orders. In a database diagram, you'll see these sketched out a couple of different ways. Some people use the crow's foot symbol to show which way the relationship goes. In others, you might see the one to infinity symbol. So one customer has many orders, one category has many products, one department has many employees, one classroom has many students, and so on. And it's very, very common to have these kind of relationships between your tables. Most tables in well-designed databases have relationships to one or more other tables. Now, bear in mind, when you describe a one-to-many relationship in the database, you aren't required to have many. A customer is not required to have many orders. Customer might place only one order, might place no orders at all. But the database internal rules support the idea that one customer can have many orders, one category can have many products, one department can have many employees. But the opposite of these statements is not true, at least in the imaginary business I'm describing. So while each customer can have many orders, each order is for only one customer. I can't say that an order has many customers, it can't. 
A department has many employees, but an employee only has one department. A product only has one category. Now, as always, I'm trying to describe simple business examples that might be a little mundane, but are easy to grasp. If your actual business rules support a more flexible situation, that perhaps an order can involve multiple customers or an employee can work for multiple departments at the same time, you may have to define a different kind of relationship. Instead of one-to-many, many-to-many. And that's up next.